Hello, folks. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. All right. In case you didn't see it over the weekend, a Wall Street Journal editorial makes the point that the long and complicated indictment of former President Trump never once mentioned the Presidential Records Act that allows a president access to documents, both classified and unclassified, once he leaves the office. And everybody should read that editorial. The journal goes on to say the indictment assumes Trump had no right to take any classified documents. This assumption is completely false. The whole point of this discussion, going all the way back to the insane invasion of Mar-a-Lago last summer, was about discussions and disagreement between Mr. Trump on the one hand and the National Archives on the other. I say this because the Wall Street Journal has been no fan of Donald Trump's, but more importantly, they are making a crucial point. This has nothing to do with espionage. Trump didn't sell or hand over documents to any foreign government. And as far as showing one of these docs to somebody writing a book where he probably just waved it in front of them, that is sheer nonsense. There's no criminality to it. Carelessness? Probably. Criminality? No way. You know, sometimes Mr. Trump says things we all wish he wouldn't say. But it seems to me that becomes hearsay in a court of law. This is a civil court matter, one that could and should be successfully negotiated by the National Archives and Mr. Trump, period, full stop. Now, this was the case with Hillary Clinton's hidden classified emails. And that action by Jack Smith and Merrick Garland should never have met the standard of pursuit by a reasonable prosecutor, as per the late departed James Comey, regarding Hillary Clinton. And then there's Joe Biden, who has classified documents strewn about and laying all around kinds of places, from Corvettes and garages to University of Pennsylvania think tanks to Chinatown in Washington, D.C., and who knows, where else? And there is a strong suspicion that there are hundreds of boxes not yet found or declared or even opened in the Biden box saga. But here's the key point about the Biden story. As a senator and as vice president, he was not legally empowered to remove any documents from the National Archives. None. He took hundreds, if not thousands, of boxes home that he shouldn't have never taken home. That's the law under the Presidential Records Act. In other words, Trump was allowed to take stuff home. That was legal. Biden was not allowed to take stuff home. That is illegal. So why has Trump been busted rather than Biden? Well, I'll tell you. It's pure politics. It's a double standard of justice. The weaponization of our legal justice system in order to prevent Donald Trump from becoming president again. Democrats know that in a Trump second term, where he knows now where all the bodies lay, he'll clean out the stables of Democratic corruption in the Justice Department, the FBI, the CIA, throughout the federal bureaucracy, and that he, more than anybody else running for president, has the experience and the strength and the fortitude and the fightingness to do the job that the far-left Democrats fear the most. All right? And that's my riff. That's it. That's all I got. Joining me now, the aforementioned Kentucky Congressman, Mr. James Comer, who is chair of the Oversight Committee. Jim Comer, welcome back. I'm sure you heard Brooke Singman. I mean, one point, I know you have additional things to talk about, but one point that is so interesting to me, interesting, quote, unquote, is that Burisma wanted to come into the U.S. energy business one way or another, and this prosecutor in the Ukraine was standing in the way. So what do they do? They go after uh, uh, flat-out bribery to the Bidens, who were in power at the time as vice president. I mean, to me, that rings so clearly. There's motive here, which, uh, thanks to Brooks' reporting, I hadn't heard before. Yeah, what the, what the motive was, Larry, was they were wanting to enter into the U.S. energy market through an IPO. And they felt like oh. they couldn't they couldn't conduct an initial public offering if they were under investigation for corruption in Ukraine. So that's what it all pertained to. That's where the, the supposed bribe happened. That, that's why it happened, because they wanted to get rid of the prosecutor and try to clear up their name 
and have a Biden on the board so that they could do an initial public offering to try to show credibility as they as they try to expand the market. They also wanted to buy a, a an existing energy company, and I believe it was in Texas, but I don't know the name of the company. So ah, that was their okay. whole business model, okay. that to get their foot in the door, buy a company and do an IPO. I had not heard that before, sir, honestly. Uh, you know, uh, Brooke Singman's articles uh, laid out, but the specific. So you're saying they're trying to do an IPO and maybe hook up with one of the Texas oil companies. That was the genesis, if you will. That was the motivating intent of this whole process. And they decided to do it uh, the old fashioned Ukrainian way just buy the, bribe the boss of the other country, right? That's what they do in Ukraine. That's, right. That's exactly that. And U Ukraine has a history of that, they have a history of corruption. And, you know, the, if you look at the countries where we're investigating the Biden family for, for taking money from foreign nationals, they all fit a pattern of, of countries with a history of corruption and a history of bribery. Mr. Chairman, uh, tell us now you're looking, there may be more FBI uh, 1023 documents out there. Right. And that's why we postponed the motion to hold Director Ray in contempt. He decided hours before the, the vote that he would cooperate with us. Not only did he grant my whole committee access to that one 1023, he admitted what I've suspected all along, that there are other 1023s. So we know there are at least two more because they're somewhat referenced in the one that we read in footnotes. So this is something that's very important to my investigation. I know a lot of Republicans were saying, oh, you need to hold the FBI director in contempt. But my goal, Larry, is to get information. Uh, we're following the money. To follow the money, we have to find these bank accounts and find these shell companies where the Bidens were laundering money uh, through, their, through their shell companies. And that's what the 1023 alleged, that they bragged that no one would ever find the, the bribe that they sent Joe Biden because they funneled it through so many different banks. So any additional information I can get is of the utmost importance to our investigation and for transparency's sake for the American people. So uh, we're moving in the right direction on this investigation. I have more bank records that should be coming in any day now, and I'm waiting for the additional 1023 forms that Jamie Raskin and I will then be able to go in a classified setting and, and review. Mr. Chairman, any hints, any sense, uh, maybe from the confidential informant, or the whistleblower of what those additional 1023s may contain? I think what you're going to see is they contain additional conversations from the informant about potential bribery by Joe Biden. The one that we looked at was dated in, in the summer of 2020, but we know that these conversations started uh, as early as 2017. So there's a lot more to this story. And it's just like what I went through with the suspicious activity reports. You know, they wouldn't let me in Treasury forever. They said, oh, there's nothing to see there. There's nothing to see there. Well, I go in there and we find out that there are uh, nine Biden family members that were getting wires from foreign nationals. We find out that these wires were taking place while Joe Biden was vice president. We find out that uh, the, the Biden family got a million dollars from Romania while he was vice president. Nobody knew about that. So we found out a lot of new information by getting access to the suspicious activity reports. I think the same thing's gonna happen with these 1023s. And Larry, you have to understand, two weeks ago, Director Ray tried to imply to both Senator Grassley and I that there were no 1023s right. in existence in the FBI pertaining right. to Joe Biden and bribery. Now we're up to three. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't find more. The FBI situation, the FBI story is untenable, absolutely untenable. Ray should be fired or he should resign. I mean, actually, the top five or six layers should resign, uh, which is what I think Donald Trump, maybe other candidates will do if a Republican is elected. Uh, Mr. Chairman, let me just ask you this. As your trail, you're hot on the trail, as this trail gets hotter and hotter and the bribery scandal grows and the evidence points to it, does this not constitute an impeachable offense for President Biden? Yeah, if we can trace bribery, it sure does. But look what we've already found, Larry. Uh, the Biden family has at least 20 shell companies that were created for the sole purpose to launder money to at least nine Biden family members. When you create a bunch of shell companies for the sole purpose of laundering money, that's called racketeering. And the, and the, the money laundering, the, those aren't my words. Those are the words of at least six 
big publicly traded banks that filed bank violations against the Biden family. They said it sure appears that they're money laundering. So these are some serious crimes that we've already uncovered, uh, but there's still many more banks to go uh, and, and many more shell companies that I think that we'll, we'll discover along the way. All right, House Chairman. House, um, uh, what is the official title? House Oversight. Chairman of the House Oversight. You're, I was going to yeah. give you judicial, but you're oversight. House uh, yeah. Oversight Committee Chair uh, James Carmer. Jim Carmer, thank you ever so much. Appreciate it, sir. Thanks for having me. We begin this first hour of Fox and Friends down in Florida. Former President Donald Trump heads to a Miami or heads down to Miami today ahead of tomorrow's federal court hearing as he faces dozens of charges over his handling of classified documents. I didn't hear anything about this. This is, uh, this is news to me. Both federal and local authorities ramping up security measures as Trump supporters are rallying around him. Jonathan Sari is live outside the U.S. District Court building in South Florida with the latest. Good morning to you, Jonathan. Good morning, Steve Ainsley and Brian. Security is always tight around federal courthouses, but you can only imagine it rises to a much higher level when the defendant is a former U.S. president. The Washington Post is reporting law enforcement are actively monitoring online threats from extremist groups, monitoring their plans for rallies in the Miami area. One of them reportedly planned for outside the courthouse tomorrow and also bringing in additional officers. Mr. Trump has been in indicted on 37 counts related to the alleged mishandling of classified White House documents stored in various locations around his Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach, Florida. The charges include 31 counts of willful retention of national defense information with other charges related to Mr. Trump's alleged efforts to conceal the documents from federal investigators. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham says although he does not like certain things the former president did, the charges against him go way too far. President Trump will have his day in court, but espionage charges are absolutely ridiculous. Whether you like Trump or not, he did not commit espionage. He did not disseminate, leak, or provide information to a foreign power or to a news organization to damage this country. He is not a spy. But Mr. Trump's former attorney general, Bill Barr, says in this case, federal investigators were right to be concerned about how the former president was storing documents on military strategy and other sensitive information. It quickly became clear that what the government was really worried about were these classified and very sensitive documents. I was shocked by the degree of sensitivity of these documents and how many there were. And I think the counts under the Espionage Act uh, that he willfully retained those documents are solid counts. But I do think that even half of what Andy McCarthy said, which is if even half of it is true, then he's toast. But some Republicans accuse the Justice Department of aggressively pursuing Mr. Trump while slow-stepping investigations into President Biden. Kentucky Congressman James Comer released more details about allegations from a confidential FBI source claiming that Mr. Biden accepted money from a foreign national to influence policy decisions while Mr. Biden was serving as vice president. The reason I think it's credible, Trey, is because this was dated, this last 1023, in June or July of, of 2020, three years before anybody knew about the shell companies and knew that the Bidens were laundering money through six different American banks. In the 1023, the informant says that the payee alleges that he paid the bribe to the Bidens and, and that no one would ever find it because the way they set it up, they they transferred the money through so many different banks, it would take 10 years for investigators to find out. At rallies over the weekend, Mr. Trump accused federal prosecutors of trying to suppress his political ambitions, but he says that will not deter him for his campaign for a second term in the White House. Back to you guys. And, and Jonathan, uh, you touched a little bit on this. You mentioned Donald Trump yesterday. Yesterday, he was on the radio with Roger Stone and called for protests. Uh, in advance and after uh, what happens at the courthouse behind you. Uh, I, I read the same article you did in the Washington Post. It talks a little bit about how law enforcement is a little worried about the fact that it sounds like one of the rallies is going to be thrown by the Proud Boys down there. 
Uh, that's right. Uh, according to the Washington Post article, the Proud Boys are uh, organizing a rally out uh, outside the courthouse here, and that certainly raises the level of concern. When Mr. Trump was calling uh, for protests, at least in the soundbite I heard, he also specified peaceful protests. But the concern yes. among law enforcement is that if some of these more extreme groups get involved, the rallies may be less than peaceful. That's exactly right. Jonathan, thank you very much. Also, Roger Stone encouraged the demonstrators to rem remain peaceful and legal. Well, they have amped up security down mm -hmm. in Miami because of this. They're monitoring some threats online and some, some talk online. He's traveling from Bedminster to, down to, to Miami, as we've been reporting today. Secret Service, it's being reported. They were trying to tell him, don't go down today, let's go, go tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Right, and on Tuesday, after his indictment at about 3 o'clock, we don't know if it's going to be a mugshot, you know, it'll be fingerprinted, there'll be no cameras in the courtroom. But we do know about 8.15, he's going to give a speech. Uh, so that's going to be uh, big news. Uh, and he's saying, look, Joe Biden's looking at jail as number one opponent that's beating him in the polls and is the uh, winning big time for the, for the nomination. Both things of relate is true. And it seems as though after the New York case, he got a huge bunch, a bump, uh, a bump in the polls. Seems like it's going to happen again. Uh, there's a lot of people, as Lindsey Graham brought up yesterday, as, and William Barr said it. Listen, he said, I went to bat with you over other situations. I've been there with you before. I think you've been un unjustly targeted, and I've said that. But this case, there's a lot there. Lindsey Graham says, it might be true. There's a lot there. But people have shut off ever since 2015, seeing from the day he won and the Russia investigation, trying to delegitimize him, what happened after uh, 2020, the doubts people had about the election. And now you hit him with the indictment with Alvin Bragg, which is a farce. And then this, if it does indeed have substance, people have shut off. So half the country has shut off this indictment. You can't convince them, at least half the country. Well, 110 years he's, he's facing for having documents in his house that Joe Biden also had the same documents, classified documents in his garage next to his Corvette. And Hillary Clinton is, is bleach bidding and using hammers to destroy her evidence. It's just such a double standard. And that's what the New York Post is, is writing about this morning. Here's the headline. What about the Bidens? Trump was indicted, but what about the Bidens? And it talks about the Corvette and his garage and uh, just the double standard. And that's what Lindsey Graham was focusing on. Yeah, he might have done something wrong. He should have, he should have returned these documents when asked about it. Right. Never should have taken them. But neither should uh, the, vice, the former vice president. Neither should have Joe Biden. Joe Biden was a vice president and maybe a senator when he had some of mm -hmm. these documents? Right. Absolutely. It, to a lot of people, it looks like there's an uneven standard of justice. For the Republicans, luckily, the Republicans in the oversight and judiciary are looking into it. Uh, there was a, uh, we have a quote from Miranda Devine. She writes in the New York Post today a little bit, bit about this. Biden laughs off FBI bribery claims as evidence against him and Hunter mounts. Because he it, said, show me the money. Right, Where's exactly. the money? Uh, you know, St Stephen Nelson asked at uh, that particular uh, press event on Thursday. It's interesting. O.J. Simpson, of all people, yesterday came out and he said, look, I've had some of the world's greatest lawyers. I've had Johnny Cochran and I've had Alan Dershowitz. And this is the advice that I would give to Donald Trump that I got from my lawyers. And he said, don't talk about the case publicly. Don't do interviews about the case. He said, quote, I don't know if Donald's lawyers are stressing this to him, but if not, they should be fired and he should sue them. So uh, O.J. Simpson right. is OJ essentially saying Donald Trump right. has got to stop talking about the case because he'll just dig a hole I for I think it was Joe Contra this morning on um, Fox and Friends First who made a good point, and it's so obvious, but it just dawned on me. He said, you know, in other countries we see political opponents get thrown in prison because of something that they have done in the past or just as a way a corrupt government a banana republic and we've seen that down in venezuela and caracas we've, we've seen that in other countries and that's what's happening here it seems Andy mccarthy uh who said if the if the half of this is true the president's in real trouble he also said jim jordan should demand as chairman of the oversight committee an update on what's happened with joe biden because you can't sit there and if jack smith's going to come out and says no one's above the law and equal justice for all People don't buy that, whether you love Jack Smith or not. A lot of he's had some problems in the past in this prosecution. Look at uh, Governor McDonald over in Virginia. So having said that, if you want equal justice, then just, just show me the equal justice on Joe Biden. And if you tell me you're not done, how about an update? Because a lot's at stake here. Meanwhile, Joe Rogan picked out something that's been abundantly true. 
is that Joe Biden's been lying his entire professional life. He's been lying about the speeches he had. He's been lying about his grades in college. He's been lying about the double major he never had, his athletic scholarship he didn't get. And he goes way, way back, and it's continuing today. He brought that up on his podcast. All the stuff with his son and the, the, the ties to Ukraine and China and the money. The family, that got, they got paid millions of dollars, and everyone's trying to obscure it because, well, it's better than Trump, better than Trump. If that guy was a P Republican, they would be up his ass oh. with a microscope. I know. It is unbelievable. They went with this corrupt career politician. Yeah. I mean, it's wild stuff, man. The media is overwhelmingly left-leaning, and if you have a left-leaning politician or a left-wing Democratic politician, and then you have this media that yeah. essentially works to support that person— I mean, they, they ignore any information that leads to distrust in the government or distrust in this administration or distrust in this, this party, this political party. Yeah, it's the dark arts, man. Yesterday on Fox News Sunday, which was the same show that Bill Barr said if half the stuff is true about uh, Trump, he's toast. Uh, Donald Trump's attorney, Alina Haba, who's not representing him on the Dacalago case, uh, said that uh, Mr. Trump would soon make a determination whether or not he wants a speedy trial, which he is entitled to. And also she said that, uh, that she did not envision in any world would he ever take a plea deal. Right. It's not oh, going to By the way, he... in no world will he ever want a speedy trial, ever. This guy will drag it out, and he should, as long as he could, as long as he can. It'll take about a year. Drag it out, build up his case. He's got to go 37 for 37, and then run for president. And the best thing he could do, as Adrian said to Rocky after being in her coma for way too long in Rocky II, mm. he said, Rocky, Bye. come here. No. Do you remember? Oh. She she woke up and she woke up she, and, and she said, "Rocky, said, fight, right? Go nope. fight, go Steve, do it." Steve, do you remember? <laughs> I saw that movie forty-five years oh. ago. Okay. Okay. What'd she say? She said, "Win." Win. And then oh. Nick said, "What are we waiting for?" And if he wins, dun, dun, he exonerates dun, dun, himself. Dun, 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 right. And the music starts. You remember that, Chris? Dun, dun, dun. Thank you. You were no help. All right, well, Donald Trump says even Trump says even if he's convicted, he says, "I will never leave." He said, "This is third world country stuff." Yeah. You get indicted over nothing, the ridiculous, race. baseless, yeah. most horrific abuses of power in the history of our country. He said that in Georgia, the Republican event. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. Joining us now is Florida Congressman Byron Donalds. And Congressman, it's always great to have you with us. Um, so I want to get back to this feeling that there's a two-tier justice system in this country, because so many people look back to Hillary Clinton and her emails and James Comey saying there's no prosecutor that would prosecute this case. So they're prosecuting Donald Trump, and they're doing it now, and, and people are saying this is just downright unfair. Well, it's not even a feeling. There is a two-tier justice system. That's exactly what's happened. Listen, I've read the Durham report. I've read this uh, FBI 1023 form about Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. And now you see in this documents case, I've had a chance to look at this indictment. And it is crystal clear to me that if you're a Republican who basically stands tough against the radical left agenda, they're going to do everything they can to take you out. That's really what this is about. Hillary Clinton destroyed uh, emails that were subpoenaed by Congress. She destroyed them. They, and then the only reason why people found out that she had classified emails is because they showed up on the computer of Anthony Weiner when he was being investigated for child pornography. And that's how they found her emails. Joe Biden took uh, classified documents when he was a United States senator, when he was a vice president, they were found in his garage, found at his office, all these places that they should not have been. Donald Trump is a former president of the United States. That former presidents take information with them. They have an ability to declassify, which nobody else has. And they are the executive branch when they are commander in chief. If you're now going to prosecute a former president over something like this, where is the indictment on Hillary Clinton? Where is the special counsel on Joe Biden? Because that special yeah. counsel seems to be taking his time, while Jack Smith has gone is a man berserk. Well, well that's the point. If we're going to have a conversation about documents. Fine. Let's have it for every single person to whom it applies, including our current president. The problem is his case gets slow walked. The case on Hunter Biden gets slow walked. Donald Trump case gets fast tracked. Congressman, 
What can you and your colleagues do to at least, if we're going to have this conversation, make sure it's happening on the same kind of timeline? Because it's not happening that way right now. Well, look, the first thing is, in terms of the Oversight Committee, all we can do is continue to investigate and release information to the public. If other news stations choose not to cover it, simply because it doesn't support their agenda and their narrative, there's not much we can do about that, but we will put that information out. We're actually moving through the appropriations process um, in Washington, D.C. That's going to start. And if you have elements of the Department of Justice and the FBI who believe that there is only one set of laws for Republicans and not a set of laws for other people, then yeah, we're going to have something to say about that when it's time to appropriate budgets. Last thing is, this is at the end of the day, belongs in the hands of the American people. We got to have a country where the rule of law is consistent across the board, not these political shakedowns, not political prosecutions, because that is the thing that will end our country faster than anything else. Congressman, a lot of people feel like this is a distraction from us talking about sort of the real issues that Americans are facing, too, which is a slowing economy and inflation that's running well ahead of some of the wage increases that we've seen. I read a study this morning. We could be well into the second half of 2024 when we see the worst negative impacts of GDP. That's when we're all going to the polls. Why aren't we having more of a conversation around economics? And can you bring that conversation back? Well, look, the reason why that conversation doesn't really happen in our country from a broad political perspective is because the media doesn't want to talk about it. Let's be very frank. They choose what they want to talk about. They choose what the topics are. And if that's not going to support Joe Biden in, in his efforts to get reelected, they want to ignore it. That's the reason the southern border was basically ignored. That's the reason why nobody ever talked about the fact that Vladimir Putin was amassing troops on the border of Ukraine for six months before the Ukrainian invasion. That is the reason why nobody's talking about the fact that Joe Biden's energy policy empowers China. We get the solar panels from China. We get the windmills from China. That these electric cars, there's not enough energy on our grid mm -hmm. to even power them. These are the real issues that matter. And last but not least, they don't want to talk about the fact that it's Joe Biden's reckless spending that has started this inflation, which has caused every American to fall behind, whether you're black or white, whether you're Republican or Democrat. Democrat. Well, we are talking about it, and we are going to talk about it every day until Election Day. Congressman Byron Donalds, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Former President Donald Trump is now aboard his plane, and they are about to depart to Miami, Florida, where he's scheduled to appear in federal court tomorrow afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern to be exact. And when he arrives in that courtroom, he'll be in a place no other former president has stood before facing federal counts, 37 of them relating to the mishandling of classified documents. Trump has denied any wrongdoing and mocked the indictment during a campaign rally in Georgia over the weekend. Meanwhile, Americans are revealing their thoughts on the indictment against Trump. With a new ABC poll finding nearly half of Americans, 48% agree with the Department of Justice's charges. 35% say they disagree with the case against Trump. However, that same poll found that nearly half Americans believe the charges against Trump are politically mo motivated. So I guess it depends on which team you're on if you like the charges or not. Notice that. Hello, everybody. You're watching Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner, here with my co-host Kaylee McEnany, and also joining us today, Fox News contributor Lisa Booth host of the Kennedy Saves the World podcast, Saving Us All, Kennedy Herself, and Fox News contributor and former Utah Congressman Ch Jason Chaffetz, author of the new book, The Puppeteers, The People Who Control, The People Who Control America. Great to see all of you. Jason, I'll come to you first with your thoughts. Um, it begs the question, why didn't the president just give the documents back? But at the same time, I'm telling you, the comparisons to Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden are just dramatic. It was not an equal application of justice. I was the chairman of the Oversight Committee. I issued subpoenas, preservation letters. And you know what? Hillary Clinton set up her home computer to bypass the Federal Records Act on the very same day, the very same day that she started her Senate confirmation hearing. Untold number of people without security clearances had access to those documents. Some were so classified, even I as the chairman couldn't go back and read them because they were that sensitive.
You know, before we move on, just real quickly, some of the papers that Biden was accused of, or that he took, I mean, they have right, the papers. Right. At least the ones they think they have. They haven't done all of the cherry picking. I'm certain of that. You got to go through those 1,850 boxes at the Delaware University that they pulled, apparently. But some of those documents he took when he was a U.S. senator. That's against the law. Absolutely against the law. House and Senate members, you are not allowed to take even one document. And Joe Biden took an untold, unspecified number of documents. How come they didn't go in there, guns ablaze, and trying to go figure that out with cameras in tow? Don't we know? No, we still yeah. don't know. Actually, I think we do. Yeah. Kennedy? Um, yeah, and, and there are some, some differences here between Hillary Clinton. The thing that strikes me about this is anyone who seeks the presidency, uh, if they mishandle documents, if they obstruct, if they commit conspiracy, all that stuff, they should be prosecuted. There, there should be an equal application of the law, regardless of who did it, what office they held, what office they were seeking. You're absolutely right. Um, the, the differentiation here, of course, are the conspiracy and obstruction charges. And those are the ones that have a 20 20 years each, and, and that's why he's potentially facing so much time. It wasn't just having the documents. And also, what struck me was the specificity in the indictment, and I'm wondering if that was on purpose a contrast with the Bragg indictment that we saw here in New York City, which was so incredibly vague. Mm -hmm. and, and this one, on the other hand, laid out so much in, in such great detail. Or it's just skill. <laughs> Coincides more skilled than the other okay. are doing that. Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, who's also running for president and for the GOP nomination, this weekend took the media to task over its coverage of the former president's indictment. Let's watch. With, With due counsel. respect, I think it is shameful that I, as a competitor to President Trump in this race, have to ask questions that the media isn't asking. The job of the political media, if it has one job, is to hold the U.S. government accountable. Yes, we know that. And instead, we're doing the bidding. You're seeing the media doing the bidding of the U.S. government. No. Ask the question. Get to the bottom of what Biden told Garland and what Garland told Jack Smith. If the same shoe fit the other foot, you would not take their word at face value. Do not take their word now. Get to the bottom of it. Let's actually restore journalism in this country. That's what's actually missing is Thank getting you. to the truth. So, Kaylee, what Vivek is showing us is that this is now a GOP primary issue, and it may come down to money. Who can raise the most? But as far as he's concerned, he's also said he's ready to pardon this president should that, on his first day in office, if he gets elected, should that be necessary? Yeah, and he asked the key question, which is why aren't journalists asking uh, what the attorney general knows? It's, it's the key question, and here's why. Uh, we got rid of the independent counsel statute a while ago. An independent counsel would be independent of the DOJ. A special counsel is not. I talked to a former DOJ official who uh, said the special counsel is akin to a U.S. attorney. They report to the attorney general. You can even go back and look at the codes of federal regulation that say significant moments are reported to the attorney general. When we are at a moment, our country is so device, divided right now, this will divide it further. Uh, we need to hear from Attorney General Merrick Garland. He cannot hide behind the special mm. counsel. We need to hear from Chris Ray. If we don't hear from them by tomorrow after this indictment happens, I will have some serious questions as to why, particularly at a time, you pointed out the polling, uh, and it also shows CBS, Republicans, 60 61% say Trump's indictment won't change their view. 14% says it makes their view of the former president better. So you have essentially half the country who views this one way through a political purview. And we need to hear from the Attorney General of the United States. So what I'm picking up from what you're putting down, <laughs> yes. uh, Lisa, is that if you take an infusion of support for Trump and you add it to that about a third or so of the base, what does that mean? How does that translate into politics? Well, I think before that, I just want to say, I think obviously the biggest frustration for conservatives is just this unequal application of the law, which we've all seen and witnessed under the Biden administration, which is infuriating. I mean, it probably helps him in the primary, but I, I feel that it hurts him in the general election. And that's the concern here is if you look at that ABC poll, only 31 percent of Americans have a positive opinion, a favorable opinion of Donald Trump. Now, 31 percent also have uh, a, a, you know, a favorable position on Joe Biden, so they're equal in that. But we're not living in an equal country, right? We're, we're living in a time of bias in, in the media, a time where the FBI is interjecting itself in elections. So we're fighting an, an unfair fight heading into the 2024 election. So I, I, my belief is that Democrats want to make this entire election on one man. They want to make it about Donald Trump. My concern is that if that's what happens, we lose 
in the general election because then we're not focusing on the issues that matter to the American people. We're making it a choice between you know two men versus the issues that are driving the conversation. How so will that be any different than his four years as president and he still got stuff done? I mean, this media took him on at every account. And when it wasn't them, he was being impeached by Democrats on the Hill who made impeachment much more political than it even was with Bill Clinton. Well, of course, he faced an uphill battle in a lot of things, and he was able to work against a lot of those odds, particularly on, on foreign policy matters. You know, sadly, a lot of what he's done has been reversed, because when you do things via executive action, it's undone the next time you get a Democrat uh, you know, our president uh, in the mix. But, mm -hmm. you know, my, 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 I just I, I just worry about, I, I want this election to be about so much more than just two individual people. I want it to be about the issues that are facing the uh, American people. I mean, so many Americans are suffering right now, whether it's the economy or, or even looking at things that are happening along the southern border yeah. uh, that's, you know, impacting all of America, right? And so I, I just worry that when you make the election about one person where, you know, perhaps there's more people that don't like him than like him, you know, that, that harms us heading into mm -hmm. the uh, election. Yeah, it's interesting what you say. I mean, it's going to help him in the primary, you say, but in a general, does it grow the tent is the question and let us drill down to those things that matter. All right, I want to get to you, but I, one more time, Jason, I want to put this out. Some Democrats are scoffing at the idea that Trump could still be elected if found guilty and are already talking about impeaching Trump if he's elected again. Look, it's Eric Holder. <laughs> The notion that you could have a trial, um, defendant be convicted, somehow win the election, be sworn in as president or whenever it happens, um, that seems inconsistent with our, our, our notion of, of, of fairness, of, of the rule of law. Uh, at, at that point, I would hope that an impeachment proceeding um, might be considered, um, not only considered, brought, and ultimately he would be removed um, from office. The, the notion that a convicted felon, convicted felon, uh, would serve as president of the United States is is absurd. Okay, it is a founding principle: innocent until proven guilty. Uh, apparently, right. across the aisle, they're they're not getting that a across from Republicans. It, it's pretty rich to hear from a guy who believes so hardly, wholeheartedly in the rule of law. Eric Holder uh, was held in contempt of Congress. The statute says he shall, shall be prosecuted. And it was given to the U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, and they did not pursue that. They shall that. not. They shall not. They <laughs> decided they shall think about it, and then they decided not to. Um, it, that's an absurd notion. Again, I think they're trying to win this case in the court of public opinion. It is not about the rule of law for them. That's why they released the photos the way they did. I thought those were gratuitous at best. If you look very closely at the photo that they released of the spilled box making it look sloppy, and then zoom in on it, it's newspaper clippings and it's pictures of right. the president. The it's, former there's president nothing classified in there that's so, so pointed that out on true social. I, I mean, it's there's nothing in there. The, and they released the audio tape of Donald Trump before the indictment. They are fighting this in the public's mind because they want to defeat him. And they can't do it on the merits. They want to fight him and make sure that he does not become the next president. Well, that helps him go. in southern, the Southern District of Florida because a jury, oh, sure. a jury of his peers are going to be Trump supporters, right? So he's going to face well, a much judge favorable... Well, but he's, he's got Florida. He's, so, that, so that at least means that there could be a playing field here that's more even yes. with Eileen Cannon there. Yeah, exactly. so South Florida is is key here. I, right I live there. That, it's, yeah, that might be why of... Democrats uh, are thirsty to see if they can... You know, get a change of They're not going to have a the trial DOJ. before the election. They're not going to have a trial before the election. We'll see. All right. Okay. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights. I'm Laura Ingram. This is Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. My angle in moments. But first, they wanted today to be all about former President Trump's Miami arraignment. Now, the coverage, it was kind of reminiscent of O.J. and the white Bronco. I want to take you to these pictures now, as we can see, that appears to be President Trump, who uh, just entered that vehicle. We're seeing President Trump in that SUV, former President Trump in that SUV. You're looking right there at the SUV. We'll wait and see what happens over the next minute or so, see if we can tell who's getting out. There's Donald J. Trump coming out of uh, the car there, the SUV going up the steps. And did you know that this was extremely historic? 
Tomorrow, a remarkable moment in U.S. history will unfold. The first ever arraignment of a former president in federal court. Historic and unprecedented. We've never seen a former president sit in federal court at a defendant's table. Soon he will take off for Florida and for history. And of course, a day like this would not be complete without disgraced former FBI officials passing judgment on their favorite target. Our system is not based on, you know, we don't play by organized crime rules. It's not you take out one of my guys, I take out one of your guys, it's all equal. I think what we know about Donald Trump is his approach to business, his approach to politics, his approach to pers interpersonal relations. It is a constant pursuit of advantage. My guess, and it's speculation, is that he saw in this material information that might be useful to him at some point in the future. Where's the disclaimer you're listening to a liar when he comes on? But then a few hours ago, Republican Senator Chuck Grassley stepped onto the Senate floor. He completely upended official Washington. From what I've been told by folks who've reviewed it at the foreign national who allegedly bribed Joe and Hunter Biden, allegedly has audio recordings of his conversation with them. 17 such recordings, 15 audio recordings of phone calls between him and Hunter Biden. According to the 1023, the foreign national possesses two audio recordings of phone calls between him and then Vice President Joe Biden. These recordings were allegedly kept as a sort of insurance policy for the foreign national in case that he got into a tight spot. Okay, Grassley hasn't heard the tapes himself, but he's not uh, a guy known to reach for hyperbole at the drop of a hat, so these allegations have to be taken very seriously. Joining us now is House Judiciary Committee Chair Jim Jordan, House Oversight Committee member Byron Donalds and Molly Hemingway, Editor-in-Chief of The Federalist, Fox News contributor. Congressman Donalds, let's start with you. Um, since you've viewed the document that Grassley's actually referencing there, is there anything that he said in those comments on the Senate floor that doesn't kind of pan out from what you've seen. Laura, good to be with you. Look, I think everything that Senator Grassley says does pan out <clears throat> because the document does state that the Burisma executive actually has receipts. That's all it says, that he has information, but you just don't know what the information is. And then the other piece that definitely pans out is that they moved the money through, through several accounts that would take investigators 10 years to find. That is the modus operandi of the Biden family, whether the, whether the money comes from China, Romania, and now it's looking like Ukraine. They move it through all these LLCs, through all of these accounts, and it ends up in the hands of the family. And by the way, I will add this. Joe Biden likes to say that the rich need to pay their fair share. Well, hey, Joe, did you pay your taxes on that five mil? I don't think you mm. did. Molly, let's go to you on this. I mean, this is amazing. It's a case of incurious journalists who are covering Trump's every movement. Again, like it's, you know, 1994 and it's OJ, you know, with, with Cato Kalin waiting in the wings somewhere. And yet here we have bank accounts. We have someone like Grassley making uh, these claims based on what he understands of this record. And yet, where's the ABC, NBC? Where's the coverage? Well, and you really have two big stories that the media should be looking into. One is, yes, the Biden family business, where we learned today from Senator Grassley that the foreign national had 17 recordings, two involving the vice president, or claimed to have those. And we also heard from that uh, that Senator Grassley said that Joe Biden was involved in getting Hunter Biden on the Burisma board. Both of those are explosive things. But what's also explosive is what Senator Grassley is really focusing on, which is the FBI did not do a good job of receiving this information and investigating it. They began to investigate it. And then when it looked bad for the Biden family, they did everything in their power to hide it and keep it from being fully investigated. That is such a scandal, given that what we're talking about is the FBI meddling once again in a presidential election on behalf of a preferred candidate and against the one that they oppose. And all of this, of course, is happening as they are literally trying to imprison their top political opponent. Uh, Yet, yeah, Congressman uh, Jordan, uh, uh, on one of the other networks, they're, they're making this fanciful claim that you can't draw any equivalence between Biden and Trump's cases. <laughs> Watch this. We've been kind of living in this world throughout the course of any investigation of former President Trump. It says, what about the Bidens? Is that a fair 
analog. <laughs> I don't think we are talking about an apples to apples comparison here. So no, it's not a fair analog in that nobody in these cases has been stashing hundreds of documents with classified markings in a bathroom. Congressman well, Jordan, your response to that? Well, when you got three people who got classified document concerns and, you know, supposedly mishandled Clinton, Biden and, and President Trump, and only one gets indicted, how is that justice? How is that equal application of the law? Americans have common sense. They, they see this double standard uh, that, that exists for Republicans and conservatives and for President Trump, for goodness sake. But I can't get past the irony, Laura. The irony that I remember when Jim Comey said, I hope there are tapes, when he was talking about him and President And now it <laughs> looks like we have tapes, for goodness sake, that this guy kept. The other thing about that document, I read that document last week, too. The section Byron was referencing about this foreign national who's, who's an executive at Burisma, he also says in that section, we, he tells, tells the confidential human source, we don't need anything, nothing to worry about because we have so many bank accounts, it'll take forever for them to figure it out. And he also says, we never paid the big guy directly. So now we know this is the second person to use that term. He uses that term before we knew about the first guy, James Gilyark, a, a, a business associate of Hunter Biden. When we learned about that in October 2020, this document was put together in August of 2020. So now we got both sides of the equation using the same term, the big guy. And if the big guy is not Joe Biden, somebody needs to explain to me who it is. So that's that's the part of them that from the document I took away is, wow, that is the most compelling that, uh, evidence, I think, that shows how this is connected to the president of the United States. This is why this document, in the end, does need to be made public so the whole country gets to see it. All of it has to be declassified, especially Congressman Donald, since we're, we're fighting a proxy war in Ukraine right now. We also, and I'm going to get to this in my angle, we also have serious concerns about whether we're able to take on China now, given our depletion of munitions. We're going to get into that in a moment. So we have these big geopolitical challenges and perhaps money going from two big geopolitical forces to the Biden family. I mean, this is, I mean, and we're talking about documents in a bathroom. I'm not saying those aren't important, but come on. We got money from foreign countries. You're absolutely right. One quick <laughs> thing, Laura. This, F, this FBI Doc 1023 is not a classified not document. They made us review it in the SCIF, but that document is not classified. That's number one. Number two, I find it highly ironic that none of this ever sees the light of day with any of the members of the press, but the second they get a transcript of an audio recording, it is now leaked to the entire press. Mm -hmm. I thought that leaking information in a criminal investigation was against the law. That's what I heard a long time ago. I thought that's illegal as well. But here's the last point, and you're making a key point. The president and the president family, and I stress, the president and the president's family have been shaking down foreign companies and foreign countries for a long time. Don't tell me that Joe Biden is not compromised by the fact that his family has gotten millions and millions of dollars through all these dummy shell corporations that they set up in his last year and a half as vice president. They set it up on purpose for this exact thing. And I think it's time that a special counsel is brought forward to investigate this the same way they have this zealous uh, prosecution of President Trump. Yeah, Molly, just to continue on with that, the national security implications of a money trail through various shell corporations and accounts that make their way to Biden Family Inc., is that not significant? If this all pans out as we think it will, and I think it will, I mean, again, we're talking what's more important here. I'm not saying classified documents and the way they're stored isn't important. I actually think it is important. But what's more important here? for the future of America, the bathroom well, documents or what hap what's happening with China and Ukraine. And I think people remember that we had years of conspiracy theories about the previous president supposedly being a victim of compromise that Russian that Russia had against him. Here you have an actual allegation from a credible whistleblower <laughs> saying that a foreign national Good has point. tapes of compromise, and the media are like, "Gosh, I don't really think there's anything here." And I'm glad that Representative Donalds m mentioned that this is not even a classified document, but Christopher Wray and the FBI are hiding it from the American people because mm. it's embarrassing to the FBI that they 
did not investigate it. And Senator Grassley made a very good point today. He said, this is the FBI that is leaking to The New York Times classified information every day, but they won't reveal an unclassified document to the American people. It's... And so, yes, you care about classified information. A lot of Americans have been caring about classified information, as everybody in the FBI was leaking like a sieve to The Washington Post and New York Times Bingo. to gin up fake controversies. But you don't hear the media saying that they think the Espionage Act should be used against them or the people that they were working with to undermine the country. So we're seeing a lot of problems all across the board. And, and Congressman Jordan, I know people watching are thinking, we keep hearing these complaints all the time about mm -hmm. the FBI. I've been hearing this for years in the intel agencies. When are Republicans going to use the power of the purse and say, we're done? You, yeah, you hear some of the presidential candidates, Rob Swamy, obviously Trump and DeSantis, totally. they all want to do something here. But now it's up to you all. Yeah, it sure is. And we will use the appropriations process. The first appropriation bill is going to pass next week out of the House. And then we have several others. We have to use the power of the purse. And frankly, what we also have to do, FISA reauthorization is up this year. We have to fundamentally change FISA, get the FBI out of that program altogether. We're sick of the abuse that takes place there. So we have to do that. But in the end, Laura, the only thing that's going to change is when we have somebody new in the White House who puts someone in charge of the Justice Department that will get rid of all this. We can do everything we can from, from the uh, legislative branch and we're going to do that and we're going to change FISA. But in the end, you have to have an executive who says we will no longer have a Justice Department that targets we the people, that targets the American citizen. That is the only thing that's going to fix it. The press isn't going to cover it. We have to do it that way. And that's why elections are important. Yeah, defund and new president, both. How about a one-two punch? Panel, great to see you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. Senator Chuck Grassley says there are tape recordings of then-Vice President Joe Biden, his son Hunter, and a foreign executive discussing a bribe. Watch this. The foreign national who allegedly bribed Joe and Hunter Biden allegedly has audio recordings of his conversation with them. Seventeen such recordings. These recordings were allegedly kept as a sort of insurance policy for the foreign national in case that he got into a tight spot. The 1023 also indicates that then Vice President Joe Biden may have been involved in Burma employing Hunter Biden. Senator J.D. Vance, Republican from the great state of Ohio, joins me now. Mr. Senator, for the first time, I sense that somebody is going to be held accountable. What say you? No, I think that's exactly right, Stuart. If you look at what Chuck Grassley said on the Senate floor yesterday, he's making a number of extraordinarily dangerous and terrifying allegations yeah. about not just what Joe Biden was engaged in, but also the FBI's attempt to cover for him. Because a lot of this stuff, a lot of what's in these tapes, a lot of what Chuck Grassley is accusing the FBI of is that they're not being transparent with the oversight committees and with the U.S. Senate about what's actually going on. The other thing that's crazy about this, Stuart, is, is even even though we don't know what's in these tapes, of course, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Joe Biden lied to the American people when he insisted repeatedly that he never participated in any conversations about his son's business dealings. We now know that is false. Joe Biden said that he never participated in those conversations. Clearly he did. And there are t apparently tapes of those conversations. On the bigger picture, how do you see the Trump versus Biden situation playing out? It's really a crazy situation which our country has never seen before. How does it play out? Uh, well, we have to step back and recognize that, of course, Donald Trump is being indicted today at the very same time when some extremely damaging uh, pieces of information are coming out about the fact that Joe Biden may have been bribed to enrich his son and enrich his family. So at the very same time that the light is on Joe Biden and his family's business dealings, we're indicting his chief political rival in the United States. This is banana republic stuff, and it gives further credence to the idea that the entire sham Trump indictment is about distracting from the corrupt business dealings of Hunter and Joe Biden. This has never been seen in this country before where you use the justice system not for justice but for politics and to take down a political opponent and distract from your own corruption. I know you are a Trump supporter. Do you see a clear path to him getting the nomination and then beating whomsoever is the Democrat op op opponent? 
Well, I, I, I do. I think Trump both was the best president and will be the best president again, but is also the best political candidate to carry forward the conservative message mm -hmm. in both the primary and the general election. But, Stu, this is an important issue, whether you're a Trump supporter or not. I, I try to make this argument. Even if you don't like Donald Trump, you cannot sanction the Department of Justice right. selectively prosecuting him and laying off of Joe Biden and a number of Democrats. That's not justice. That's politics and an assault on a fundamental American principle. J.D. Vance, a great senator from Ohio. Thank you very much for being with us, sir. We do appreciate it, always. Thank Thanks you. for having me. You got it. Don't blame us, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, blaming the Trump White House for China building a spy facility in Cuba. He said that that administration wasn't making enough progress on the issues. Joining us now, Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson. Senator, really appreciate you joining us. How do you respond to that, the blame game? Well, first of all, blame the Chinese. And to the extent that the Ch China is expanding their capabilities, uh, blame the fact that the Biden administration is completely weak. Uh, I believe that uh, President Joe Biden is compromised. I think uh, China has all kinds of information on his vast web of foreign financial entanglements. So uh, it's, un it's unfortunate. Uh, America needs to be able to respond uh, to what China is doing around the world. They're, they've become aggressive. Uh, I wish they were no more than a a friendly rival, but they've become an unfriendly adversary, and we need to respond with strength. Um, Senator, let me ask you this, because you say, and, and this is related to a certain degree, um, we're not looking at President Biden right now, but our Justice Department is looking at President Trump. And you say the FBI and the DOJ are actually interfering in the 2024 election. Many Americans feel that way, too, um, in a similar way as in 2016. Is there anything that you can do on the Hill to fight this because people are very concerned that there's not equal justice in this country um, and that to a degree these elections aren't necessarily fair. Well, we expose the truth and that's what we've been doing. I mean, go back to Lois Lerner. We expose the fact that the Obama administration had weaponized the IRS against Tea Party groups. Uh, we certainly found out that uh, James Comey's uh, exoneration memo was edited to remove things that might be criminal. Uh, we obviously know now about the corrupt FBI investigation on the Russian hoax. So let's face it, federal law enforcement has been targeting President Trump since before he became president. And they, they've been relentless about it. And it's been the FBI, it's been the Department of Justice. Now we know it's the intelligence uh, officials, you know, at least former ones uh, that signed that letter, uh, saying that the Hunter Biden laptop was uh, a Russian information operation. That, that letter was a information operation that in, interfered in our election. By the way, when the FBI leaked a secure briefing they gave to Senator Grassley and I to the Washington Post, that interfered in the Wisconsin senatorial election. So this has been happening time and time again. It has to stop. Uh, this indictment never should have come down because we never should have done a SWAT raid on a former president's uh, secure location. Uh, this is a travesty what's happening in this country, but it's all being driven by, by partisans inside the federal government and, quite honestly, partisans in the mainstream media. So, Senator, exposing the truth is good, but the problem is if you expose the truth and you do it again and again and nothing changes, then it really doesn't seem to matter because the FBI, the DOJ is operating just like it did five years ago, just like it did eight years ago on these. What can you actually do to force meaningful change? And to me, the only thing that comes to mind is money. How do you change the money situation with these agencies so that they have to change their behavior? If you're funding them the way they do business now, it seems they'll just keep doing business this way. Well, as I often say, say nobody can out frustrate me. So I realize the progress is slow and it's very frustrating. But, but exposure hopefully will end up in getting the right people elected so we can clean up these places. Uh, let, let's face it, Democrats aren't going to agree in the Senate to defund the FBI. So, I mean, you can have the House do some cer certain things, and, and they should. And then when Democrats bring up appropriation bills without those types of defunding measures, uh, we can offer amendments here which will fail. So, again, you have to look at the reality situation. It's going to be difficult to do this, so I go back to uh, accountability begins with exposure, exposing the truth. Hopefully enough Americans will listen to it, but that's part of the problem why I always call, talk about the compliant, complicit, and corrupt media. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not covering this. They're, they're not holding both sides equally accountable, and that's what we need a free press to do, but they're not doing their job. 
we're trying to do it on this program, Senator. I know, you are. I know that you uh, mentioned that you know voters should be paying attention. Before we get to the election, what can you guys do on your end to speed up some of the other investigations? To Brian's point, where maybe it's about Hunter, maybe it's about the laptop, maybe it's about money that we've heard coming um, that's entangled between the Chinese and and this president. Anything you can do to speed up the process? Well, unfortunately, Senator Grassley and I lost our chairmanships. We lost the uh, majority. Uh, but we still encourage whistleblowers. As, as a matter of fact, there's a whistleblower that came to Senator Grassley's office and then to James Comer's office that talked about the, this form that uh, alleged the, the $10 million bribery scheme to the Bidens. So we continue to encourage whistleblowers. It's extremely important. Uh, most people working in the federal government are people of integrity. If they want integrity restored, credibility restored in their agencies, they have to come forward to Congress and realize that laws are written to protect those disclosures. You have every right to come to members of Congress. I encourage them. We have a whistleblower account in, in my office. Uh, we need more people coming, in, coming forward from these agencies to tell the American public the truth. That's an excellent point, Senator. And I think a lot of Americans, when these um, kind of points do come to light, they're not stupid. So in the court of public opinion, um, you know, decisions are made as well. Yeah. We appreciate your time today, Senator Johnson. Thank you. Have a good day. So let's ask Alabama Senator Tommy Tuberville what he thinks about communist China 90 miles off the coast of the U.S., communist China. And uh, also, perhaps a word on uh, the Trump indictment. Uh, Mr. Tuberville, welcome back, sir. Uh, just a quick word on the Trump indictment. Uh, we've covered it. You've looked at it. Uh, has your support for President Trump moved at all in the light of this? Makes it even stronger, Larry. What, are we living in a third world country now where the political opponents, especially the one in the White House now, is going after somebody that he's going to have to run against in the next election? Uh, you know, if you live in a glass house, you don't throw rocks. And he's opened a can of worms now, the Department of Justice has, that's really ignited the Republican Party and I think even a lot of the Democrats. They look at this going, what kind of world do we live in now? Uh, so uh, very impartial. Uh, I heard you earlier talking about senators uh, with classified documents. Every time I go in to read a classified document, they search you mm. when you leave. You are not allowed to carry classified documents out of the, what we call the skiff. And so it's just unfortunate all this is going on. President Trump will be stronger from this. He can handle it. He knows adversity. He fights through it. Uh, but the American people need to see through all this. And hopefully uh, this will clear up in a very short period of time and get this behind us. Um, Senator, I know you're on the warpath about China's cryptocurrency activity. But I just want to throw in one. You know, this story, China now opening up a spy operation in Cuba. Of course, the Bidens denied it. Then, of course, they've had to backtrack and said, yeah, then they blame Donald Trump. The trouble is uh, John Radcliffe, who was the director of national intelligence under Trump, said no such thing. There was no China spying operation in Cuba. This is a recent development. What do you think about this spying operation 90 miles off the coast of Florida? Well, it's typical because President Biden, since he's been there for two and a half years, has showed weakness in everything that he's done. He let a balloon uh, go all the way across our country and uh, without doing anything about it. Uh, obviously compromised, Larry, uh, but uh, it, it makes sense for China now to say, hey, we can do per pretty much anything we want. So moving a, a, a spy office or whatever they call it into Cuba, it probably makes sense to them. Uh, at this time, President Trump would have never put up with it. And uh, it's going to cause us some problems, obviously. Uh, they'll be closer, be able to do pr pretty much anything they want. But you got to remember too, Larry, they've got satellites uh, in space right now that does pretty much the same thing. But it just shows you that uh, they're not concerned about Joe Biden or, or the Department of Justice or our military. They pretty much do what they want. You know, I just would say, sir, that a listening post in Cuba is one thing. Bringing in weapons and missiles could be another. We've lived through that. I mean, I was a kid during the Cuban Missile Crisis right. back in 1962. So I just want to say, uh, if the Bidens would please open their eyes and maybe develop some toughness with China. Lord knows, you know, you give China, you give China a half an inch and they take uh, 100 miles. Anyway, Senator, you're on the warpath about China doing cryptocurrency operations in the U.S. Tell us about that. Yeah, Larry, you and I talked about this six, seven months ago. Crypto's here to stay. And so we've got to have regulations. But the thing that we're running into now is... We've got what we call crypto exchanges 
that's coming around all over around the country. They have to be approved by the SEC and FINRA, uh, the two regulators. And, uh, you know, we all know that they're our number one adversary, the Republicans, Democrats, people across the country. But somebody needs to tell our financial regulators, because what's happened recently, uh, there's a company called Promethea that has been given the rights for a crypto exchange. Well, unfortunately, their biggest investor is Wayne John, uh, which is a, a communist uh, China party uh, company. It's their biggest investor. Now, what, what's going on uh, with our regulators? Now, there was uh, several dozen people that applied for this, American companies, but they overlooked them and went to a company that is partly owned by the Chinese Communist Party. They'll be able to pick up any kind of data that goes through this exchange. It really hurts the American people. Uh, Senator Gillibrand and I have a bill that we introduced last week that will protect and keep out uh, Chinese Communist Party uh, investors out of crypto, out of the exchanges. Uh, I'm on the Ag Committee. The Farm Bill, hopefully, uh, that we put in this year will give us an opportunity to make sure that we can keep these people out of the Chinese Communist Party uh, and keep them out of our, our exchanges. But, you know, th these regulators are asleep at the wheel. It's just another thing that the Biden administration's uh, let the Chinese do and get by with, and uh, we got to put a stop to it. All right. Good luck on the bill. I think you're dead right. Absolutely, completely right. Senator Tommy Tuberville, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you, Larry. And good Tuesday morning, everybody. Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley revealing yesterday in a bombshell uh, moment a Burisma executive who allegedly paid President Biden $5 million and Hunter Biden another $5 million says that he has more than a dozen audio recordings of conversations he had with both Joe and Hunter Biden. Watch this. The foreign national who allegedly bribed Joe and Hunter Biden allegedly has audio recordings of his conversation with them. Seventeen such recordings. These recordings were allegedly kept as a sort of insurance policy for the foreign national in case that he got into a tight spot. Joining me right now to talk more about it is South Carolina Congresswoman, member of the House Oversight and Armed Services Committees, Nancy Mays. Congresswoman, it's good to see you again. Thanks very much good for morning. being here. So was this all in the 1023 FBI report? Tell us what is going on here with these recordings that this Burisma executive says he has. So this was part of the information that was redacted in that 1023 form that we got access to. That information should not have been redacted, in my opinion. It was a heavily redacted document where we were missing some key information. While it was very detailed, information like the 17 recordings was missing uh, when we read it last Thursday. But I guess whenever we get access to those tapes is when the next Trump indictment will come down. Well, I mean, that's the thing. On the very day that, and you mentioned this on Sunday, on the very day mm -hmm. that we get uh, the bank records, you and the Oversight Committee got bank records indicating that foreign nationals sent money to uh, 20 LLCs and then were distributed to Biden family members. Then the Manhattan DA indicts Trump. And now you get access to this 1023 on the same day that Trump gets indicted. Yep. And, you know, here's the thing. Oversight, we've got tapes that we have to go after now. There'll be more subpoenas, more bank records to subpoena. Um, this is serious, and this is credible. This is legitimate. And it's clear that the president of the United States and his executive branch, the GOJ, do not want the Oversight Committee to investigate the, the corruption that he's involved with with this family, his son, his brother, and other members of the Biden family. But we're going to get to the bottom of it, Maria, come hell or high water. So, so how are you going to do that? What are your plans? Well, we're going to continue to subpoena additional bank records. I want to go back to Treasury and review the suspicious activity reports. I want to request more of those. And I sure as heck want to get my hands on those tapes and hear from myself. And the American people ought to see this evidence. They ought to see it for themselves and come to their own conclusions. If the president is corrupt, the American people ought to know about it. So uh, this, this form that you were able to learn that uh, Joe Biden was paid $5 million, Hunter Biden was paid $5 million, do you know what they were being paid for? Can you explain to us exactly what they thought they were being paid $10 million for? It was for Burisma to purchase a company in the U.S., getting certain protections 
through the vice president, his family, that the deal would go through. And here's the thing. That was a heavily redacted document. They didn't share all the information with Oversight Committee. They shared less with the Oversight Committee than they did with the chairman. And, and that's wrong. And so the FBI has been trying to stonewall the American people, stonewall the Oversight Committee, and come to find out there are actually more 1023 forms that we need to get access to, which means we're going to have to subpoena more documents from the FBI and Christopher Wray. And he's going to have to come forth to Congress and show us all this information. If he doesn't, then we'll hold him in contempt, like we would any other individual who's trying to hide and stonewall information from Congress and from the public. I mean, is this an impeachable offense for Joe Biden? If we can show proof, we show we follow the money and show the bank records and connect those dots, then it would be. But I'm I'm a due process person. I don't want to jump to conclusions without having all the evidence, dotting every I, crossing every T, so we can conclusively come to that um, decision and show the American people what's truly been going on, because everything else has been a distraction. Um, you even have former members of the DOJ, you know, going on networks and discrediting Donald Trump, even like Andrew McCabe yesterday was lamenting about the Trump indictment, yet here's a guy who was fired from the FBI for leaking classified information. That guy's the last person who should be talking about classified information. So this is a full court press by the Biden administration to tarnish Donald Trump as leading political opponent so they can avoid the distraction of these bad press stories and evidence coming out of corruption by, by then Vice President Biden, his son, and other family members. That's all this is. Well, this is extraordinary, and you would think mm -hmm. that the mainstream media will report it. Arizona Congressman Andy Ogles has already introduced articles of impeachment against President Biden, accusing him of weaponizing the presidency, covering up his family's illicit business dealings. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre claims President Biden is restoring integrity at the DOJ. Here's what she said yesterday. Watch this. This is a president that respects the rule of law. This is the president that wants to make sure uh, and has proven that to be in his actions to make sure that the Department of Justice is truly independent. He's restoring uh, certainly the integrity of the Department of Justice, and that is something that is important to this president. Well, Congresswoman, she's going to tell you that it's sunny out when it's raining out all day long. What are you going to do about it? Well, November 9th of last year, it was the president himself uh, giving his speech. He said he would use the Constitution to ensure he could bar and ban Donald Trump from running for presidency or from being president ever again. November of last year, he said that he's using every tool available to himself to take out his political enemy number one, including additional indictments. And so uh, what we have to do is show the corruption of the Biden family and of the current president to the fullest extent of the law, using facts and not fiction, being methodical and deliberate before we bring any charges or accuse the president of anything else. We've got to make sure the American people can see the evidence for themselves and come to their own conclusion. Well, how long is this going to take, and what does this mean for former President Trump? He's facing a federal judge today, expected to plead not right. guilty to 37 counts related to the classified documents stored at Mar-a-Lago. Um, look, you heard from former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe. You just mentioned it. He's defending mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton and her handling of classified material. He was there, and he actually allowed it to happen, Jim Comey, and there's been no accountability. None. And it's rich coming from a guy who got fired from the FBI for mishandling classified information. So he's got no room to talk on this. I think we can have a conversation about how to handle presidential documents after somebody leaves. But Hillary Clinton, she was secretary of state. She wasn't president. She had no authority to have that documentation with her. Neither did Joe Biden as a senator or as vice president or Mike Pence in this case. Uh, but these people, they have lost their mind. They're doing everything that they can. And look, I want to be very clear. Today's arraignment is the president of the United States using the executive branch to arrest and arraign political enemy number one, and that is Donald Trump. It is about ensuring he cannot run for president next year or be the Republican nominee, but I believe that, I w that he will be. And Joe Biden better hope and pray that Donald Trump doesn't beat him in a general election, uh, because that's what's coming next year. Well, this is just extraordinary, Congressman. We're going to keep a spotlight on it, and we appreciate your leadership on all of it. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pivot a little bit. Speaking of bad money, though, speaking of bad money, let's go to the latest Biden FBI scandal where today House members on the Oversight Committee had a look at this controversial 1023 document that the FBI tried to cover up. And let's bring in Texas Senator Ted Cruz. There he is. 
Senator Cruz, welcome back to the show, as always, sir. Uh, let me begin. Um, here's what Congressman Byron Donald said earlier about the document that he saw. Please take a listen. This document also stipulates that, according to the confidential human source, that money was being moved through several accounts, multiple accounts, to get to Joe Biden. I'm going to say it again. Money was moved on purpose through multiple accounts to get to Joe Biden. All right, there's one. Uh, Senator, I've got one more real quick from your favorite president himself, Mr. Joe Biden. Take a listen. Congresswoman Nancy May says there's damning evidence in the FBI file that you sold out the country. Do you have a response to the congressional Republicans? Where's the money? I'm joking. Mr. President, Mr. Yeah, Mr. President, it's, it's, it's a bunch of malarkey. All right, where's the money? I'm joking. It's all a bunch of malarkey. Senator Ted Cruz, you may, uh, may not have talked to some of the House members who saw this document today, um, the potential for money laundering, the potential that it actually went into Joe Biden. What do you make of this right now, Senator? Well, listen, we just heard Joe Biden demonstrate the absolute smugness of being insulated by the most politically corrupt Department of Justice in history and the most politically corrupt corporate media in history. The two together, they surround him, they protect him. Joe Biden says, where's the money? How does he know that, that, that they're not going to find the money? Well, because DOJ is not looking. They don't want to know the money. It's the opposite of Watergate. Follow the money. DOJ's approach is hide from the money, run from the money. It is disgraceful. Listen, this FBI report, you had a credible informant who the FBI had relied on for previous investigations, who came forward and presented evidence that the then Vice President of the United States, Joe Biden, was personally involved in a bribery scheme of $5 million, and that it involved a foreign nation that was not China. Now, at this point, what has happened is DOJ and the FBI continue to stonewall. The House of Representatives Oversight Committee subpoenaed that document. Initially, they came and presented that document to the chairman and ranking member of the committee, but they didn't want it to be made public. Now, uh, they have been dragged into allowing the committee members to see it, but the full House of Representatives hasn't seen it. The Senate hasn't seen it because no Senate Democrat wants to see it. it it's the monkeys, see no evil, do no evil. They just don't want to see it. They don't want to know. And, and listen, this document needs to be made public. And I got to say to Chris Ray, I've call, called out before. Chris Ray, who's the director of the FBI, believes his job is to protect the institution of the FBI. He is not protecting the FBI when he protects the hardcore partisans who burrowed in to senior career positions, who've corrupted the FBI. There is an obligation to the American people if there's credible evidence that the president of the United States was personally involved in bribery. We need full transparency. And so let me say what Joe Biden just said, show me the money. The American people deserve to be seen, shown the money, the $5 million, the millions of dollars that were funneled to at least a dozen Biden family members. We need transparency and the DOJ and the FBI need to get out of the cover-up business. So the question I have is, okay, we've established, we, the investigations, the oversight committee and so forth, they've established from Treasury Department reports and so forth, uh, yep. all these little LLCs which strongly suspect money laundering. I get that. Um, we haven't really established the bribery charge. I mean, if, if, there's, a bribery, yeah, if, if there's a bribery charge, this would be the biggest political scandal in American yes. history. I mean, I think yes. that's a fair, uh, a fair point. But um, how do we, when do we figure out whether or not Joe Biden took a bribe. I guess that's what I want to know. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, one person knows for a fact whether it's true or not. His name is Joseph Robinette Biden, Jr. You know, you know what Joe Biden could have done? He could have stood at that podium and said, if, he, if in fact 
the allegation was false. He could have said, this allegation is false. It's ridiculous to say that I took a bribe. And I'm instructing the FBI to release that document now, make the evidence public, because I'm innocent. That's what Biden could do. But he doesn't want to do that. He wants the DOJ and FBI to cover it up. Why? Because he knows the 6 o'clock news, look, you're going to show it on Fox Business, but hold your breath for CNN. Hold your breath for MSNBC, ABC, NBC, CBS. Where are they? Why are they not leading with a serious whistleblower alleges bribery by the president of the United States and the FBI stonewalls? Joe Biden could call for full transparency. When he says, where's the money? You know who else said that? Al Capone. You know who else said that? John Dillinger. Bank robbers say, where's the money? You know what? You're president of the United States. He has an obligation to be transparent with the American people. And any journalist with a shred of integrity ought to go out and read about Woodward and Bernstein again and actually start practicing journalism instead of propaganda on behalf of the regime. Yeah, good point. We're the investigative journalists now that we need yeah. them. Uh, topic number two, Senator Cruz. Um, by all accounts, or at least some accounts, I don't know, whatever, Donald Trump is about to get busted by the special counsel, obstruction of justice. Um, what do you make of that? Well, look, they're, they're leaking like crazy that an indictment of President Trump is expected today or tomorrow, that it's imminent. I, I assume that is correct. I don't have a reason to doubt uh, th those, those multiple leaks. I, I'll say this. This is not a surprise. I've, I've said publicly for a long time, Merrick Garland wants to indict Donald Trump. He came into office planning to indict Donald Trump. Unfortunately, this Department of Justice is the most political Department of Justice we've ever seen, and Merrick Garland is the most political Attorney General we've ever seen. John Mitchell, Nixon's disgraced Attorney General, is rolling over in his grave at what Merrick Garland is doing. As you know, my last book is called Justice Corrupted, how the left weaponized our legal system, and it walks through just how Merrick Garland and the Department of Justice corrupted DOJ and the FBI and the CIA and the IRS and the, and the machinery of government. And, and when it comes to this, listen, I think we don't know the exact grounds on which an indictment is coming. Uh, my theory, I think Merrick Garland planned to indict President Trump over classified documents. I think he was giddy with excitement over indicting President Trump over classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. And then, miracle upon miracles, it became public that Joe Biden had classified documents stuck just about everywhere, including literally in his garage next to his Corvette. And, and that suddenly put Merrick Garland in a difficult position legally, but also politically. If he were to indict Donald Trump for possession of classified documents, but cover up for Joe Biden doing the same thing, the double standard and hypocrisy would be obvious. So here's what I predict. I predict that he's going to indict Donald Trump, not for classified documents, but for obstruction yeah. of justice obstruction. about the classified jo yeah. documents. Now, mind you, he's not saying the underlying thing's a crime, because then he'd have to go after Joe Biden, too. He's instead going to create a crime about the non-crime, right. and that's going to be the focus of this. And I'll tell you, this is also intimately connected with the widespread leaks that DOJ plans to indict Hunter Biden. Why? Because I think Merrick Garland is looking for political cover. I think he wants to say, look how even-handed I am. I indicted Trump. I indicted a Biden. But here's the thing about Hunter Biden. If an indictment on Hunter just focuses on his personal troubles, if it fo focuses on his drug issues or his personal financial issues, that is being set up for Hunter to be a scapegoat and for everyone to say, well, he's just a troubled soul. The reason we care about Hunter Biden is the evidence of corruption of the big guy, of his father, Joe Biden, of millions of dollars being funneled from foreign nations and foreign companies to his father. And so if Merrick Garland and this DOJ just indicts Hunter, but shuts off the investigation from anything connected to Joe Biden, then that indictment is nothing more than another cover-up, which sadly has been the pattern we've seen in this DOJ for the last two and a half years. I got to get out, but, you know, I don't understand. I mean, you know, for these uh, do uh, uh, classified documents or unclassified, why don't they have like a lawn party? Like you could have Biden, Trump, Pence, 
Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, probably go all the way back to Lyndon Johnson. I mean, I don't know. There's no end to it. Nobody cares about this stuff. So I took it, some boxes. You know, you've seen these documents. I had to live with these documents for three years. They're all a bloody bore. They have these little cardboard sheets on it that says top yep. secret. Then you read about it, and it's not quite as good as what I read in the Wall Street Journal that morning. I mean, honest to God, this is just the goofiest thing I've ever seen. I just crazy. Well, we got to have a lawn it, party. It's, it's we a have political some fun. vendetta. Yeah, it is. You're right. It's total politicalization. You're exactly right. So just last one. The producers are screaming at me. We're way over time, but I can't let you go. Uh, Biden's op-ed piece today, if you do it right and you look at total civilian employment adjusted for population the way the Labor Department does, actually he created 1.1 million jobs since COVID. He hadn't even created any new jobs, not a single new job. This modern monetary theory, socialist, I don't even think Princeton teaches modern monetary theory. Maybe I'm wrong. Look, look, with the latest uh, debt deal, we're going to go up to $36 trillion in national yep. debt. Joe yep. Biden and the Democrats are bankrupting the country, and their approach is print so much money that they inflate their way out of this. Yep. Well, I'll tell you who's hurting. The people who are hurting are working men and women. I ask every person at home, is your life better than it was before yeah, Joe Biden killed. was president? They're getting killed. They're, they're getting killed they're getting everywhere. Killed. And, 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 and that's part of why Merrick Garland wants to indict Trump, is he wants to change the subject from the disaster of Biden's actual record. I got to go. Run, Ted, run. You know what I think. Run, Ted, run. Senator Cruz, you're the best. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you for being here this morning. The Biden administration continues to egregiously weaponize the federal government against Joe Biden's top political opponent. This abuse of power is rotting out numerous federal agencies. The unequal application of justice by Joe Biden's DOJ must be stopped. There cannot be one set of rules if your last name is Biden or Clinton and another set of rules for everyone else. House Republicans will continue to deliver much needed oversight to cut out the rot in these federal agencies and deliver accountability and transparency for the American people as we continue to work hard to implement our commitment to America. Last week, while it should not have taken a threat of contempt, the House Oversight Committee successfully demanded and reviewed critical documents from the FBI regarding Joe Biden's corruption. This week, we will hold the Biden administration accountable by standing up for the American people to stop the outrageous and really insane ban on gas stoves, a bad idea that started in New York that is now being embraced by every Democrat uh, and the Biden administration. We will pass the RAINS Act and the Separation of Powers Restoration Act of 2023, and House Republicans will stand up for Second Amendment rights with H.J. Res 44, a resolution restoring constitutional rights, especially for our disabled veterans, our wounded warriors. Here to speak about uh, so many of our legislative items on the floor this week, as we do every week, we highlight a freshman. Uh, this freshman is just incredible. His military service, his success starting businesses that work with our military every day. He's a colleague of mine on the House Armed Services Committee and a true rising star from Florida, Corey Mills. Thank you all so much. As the chairwoman had talked about the dangerous precedence which has been set by the bureaucratic uh, individuals who are unelected officials who think they're lawmakers bypassing our Congress and our congressional rights is truly a threat to our constitutional republic. The ATF's rule illustrates the dangers of unchecked administrative agencies that is willing to circumvent all of Congress, which is the American people. This is a continuation of the Biden administration's effort to erode American Second Amendment rights. But this is also specifically the ATF's rule would curb the Second Amendment rights of disabled veterans who have put their lives out on the line for our country. One of those individuals is a Florida resident. His name is Rick Cicero, who had lost his right arm in an explosion in Afghanistan serving our country. To quote him, he stated that getting that skill back, it reinvigorates you and it helps to maintain a bit of confidence that you're still able to do something. Now, this isn't something where the ATF is moving forward and trying to pass a new law, but actually the opposite. The ATF had this law in place where it was okay for almost 10 years. This right here in itself 
actually, and the ATF are previously approving these braces, are now backtracking on this to criminalize millions of Americans. We must stop the unelected bureaucrats who think they are lawmakers, but more importantly, we must ensure this rule does not go into effect to hurt our veterans and our law-abiding citizens. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reports that there are around 4.9 million veterans with service-connected disabilities who have fought for our country over the last two decades. This right here would not only impede their ability to continue their operations, but also hurt them from a psychological perspective where much of this is still very impactful for them on a mental wellness situation. For many disabled veterans, pistol braces are a necessary tool for them to exercise their rights safely and the right to bear arms. This, this ATF rule goes into effect. It not only impacts millions of Americans, but the men and women who bled for this country will be subject to fines and jail time. This will criminalize millions of law-abiding, responsible, gun-owning Americans, with a portion of that being our disabled veterans who we actually feel deserve better. With that, I yield back and turn it over to our majority whip, Mr. Tom Emmer. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Teams aren't built on the first day of practice, which, by the way, I have to comment on this wonderful man up here with the uh, uh, Golden Knights hat uh, in honor of the fact that uh, the uh, holy grail of God's sport will be on the line tonight. Uh, again, teams aren't built on the first day of practice. Our Republican House majority has worked hard over the last uh, five months to become a great team, and we've had a lot of success. As with every team, the Republican House majority has had to learn how to work together to build that success. And as with every team, you win some games and you lose some every now and then too. But you always come out stronger, and that's exactly what we've done. First big test after first big test, House Republicans have continued to defy expectations and to deliver big wins for the American people. It started with the speaker's fight in January. It conti uh, continued with H.R. 1, the Lower Energy Costs Act, H.R. Uh, 2, the Secure the Border Act, and our latest debt ceiling package, the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Of course, there will be days where we fight it out for the best possible outcome. But that's the beauty of having a diverse conference made up of 222 members with different ideas and different perspectives. Ultimately, we always rally together around what's best for the American people and the greatest country on the face of the planet. And I'm proud of what we've accomplished so far, and I look forward to what we're going to accomplish going forward. Now, let's go have another full week of wins for the American people. And with that, I turn it over to our leader, Steve Scalise. Love the energy the hockey guy brings. Thank you, Whip. Uh, we've got a busy week this week. Uh, you're going to see starting tonight a number of pieces of legislation pushing back on the real radical extremism from Biden and all of his uh, different agencies that are going after hardworking families. Uh, if you look at uh, the pistol brace bill, and uh, I think Corey talked about it really well, uh, the idea that the ATF would try to retroactively make felons out of millions of Americans who just want to exercise their Second Amendment rights. We've seen from the very beginning, Joe Biden wants to take away gun rights of law-abiding citizens. He's tried it multiple different ways. Uh, but coming through the back door, trying to retroactively make felons out of people, including military veterans who lost limbs fighting for our freedoms, is shameful. And we're standing up against that. I think you're going to see a bipartisan vote on the floor for that bill this evening. We're starting also bringing some of the legislation. We've got two different bills uh, covering a few of the different angles and attacks we're seeing from the Biden administration, trying to take away people's gas stoves. This is almost laughable, except it's real. Uh, the idea that the federal government wants to tell you what car you can buy by trying to ban the combustion engine through rules by unelected bureaucrats, now they want to tell you what kind of stove you have to operate in your home and having to pick a less efficient and more costly option by banning gas stoves, we're pushing back against that too. We're also bringing up a veto override today on a piece of legislation where you saw uh, D.C. going after cops once again, siding with some of the far left groups who want to make it harder for cops to do their jobs protecting our communities and keeping people safe. Uh, we're bringing that just today, tonight. Uh, and then you're going to see us continue throughout the week. The RAINS Act, a bill that says unelected bureaucrats 
shouldn't be able to come up with an idea that they haven't even passed through Congress that has devastating impacts on the economy. Time and time again, we see rules coming out of agencies that nobody can explain. Yeah, maybe we've seen them come out of states like New York and California, where those crazy ideas are running over a million people out of their states to other states. If they bring those crazy ideas to the United States, there's nowhere else to go if they ruin this country. And so the RAINS Act says, if a rule or regulation by an unelected bureaucrat has a major impact on the economy, it's got to go through Congress first. We're up for election every two years. We have to go before the voters and be held accountable for the actions that are being taken. Shouldn't we be the ones that have to decide whether or not uh, an idea from an unelected agency ultimately happens or not? If they want to be legislators, they should run for Congress, but they shouldn't be able to have devastating impacts on families, raising costs. You think inflation is high and is a problem? We agree with you. One of the problems you see inflation so high is because all these unelected bureaucrats are coming up with crazy ideas, and those crazy ideas don't just stay in the agency. They actually go all across this country and raise costs and harm hardworking families. Enough is enough. We're pushing back on all of that this week with the bills we're bringing forward. With that, we'll take some questions. Yeah. Obviously, as you talk about the substance, what you first can't get past is the fact that justice is not being carried out equally. Look at what happened on the Senate floor yesterday. And I think this has got to be covered and, and be talked about. But you literally had Senator Grassley talk about the fact that the FBI had information of audio recordings of the Burisma executives talking about bribing Biden family members. And I don't hear anybody in the press talking about it. I don't see the Justice Department going after it. In fact, the Justice Department tried to cover this up when they gave the information to the membership and the committee. It was redacted. It wasn't redacted in the original document that Senator Grassley and a few others got to see. But ultimately, when the full committee got to see the document, it's not. So people are asking the question, you know, and, and the courts are going to decide the substance. I'm not an attorney, but I look at uh, the idea that justice is supposed to be blind and just question and wonder, is it being carried out fairly? When you have DAs in a state like New York running on the idea that they're going to go after a person, not that they're going to just follow the facts wherever they lead, but they're just going to target individuals. When the president's main opponent for his reelection uh, seems to be treated in a very different way uh, than anyone else, including Joe Biden himself or Hillary Clinton or others, that's what people can't get beyond. Yeah. Well, ultimately, look, th this is in the courts, but also look at some of the, the photos that were being sensationally shown over the weekend. There was a box that was shown with all these documents spewn out. And as people looked at those documents, it turned out it wasn't anything classified. It was newspaper clippings and some personal items presented to try to give the impression that there's all these classified documents just laying around on the floor. And yet you contrast that with Joe Biden's garage where there were classified documents going back to when he was a United States senator not even a president, you know, and which, which act governs a president? Is it the Presidential Records Act? Now they seem to be using the es Espionage Act just specifically after Trump. Again, is justice being carried out fairly is the question when you see some of those pictures and go, wait a minute, these are clippings and they're trying to present it as classified documents. Uh, people are looking at that wondering. Yeah. Well, I think if the, you saw the Justice Department and other agencies are carrying out the law equally when you see some of these charges, again, audio recordings, this, is, this was from years ago with Burisma. You know, and when they say paid Biden, 
the first question that's going to be asked, which Biden? Multiple Bidens, Jamie Comer's committee has shown, were getting millions of dollars from shell corporations. Uh, again, where is that uh, public raid? Did you see a raid on Joe Biden's garage? Did you see a raid uh, on Hillary's server? She wasn't president of the United States, and she had classified documents on a server that she destroyed, almost kind of jokes about it now, uh, because she knows that she's going to be treated differently. That The different treatment is what angers people. Yes, ma'am. Well, if you look at a number of our committees are looking at accountability, and I'll call it accountability on a number of fronts. You're, you're seeing Mark Green's committees looking into Mayorkas. Secretary Mayorkas has had articles of impeachment filed against him, but also all of us up here have talked about the crisis at the border and the fact that he hasn't been doing his job. Uh, there's a five-point oversight investigation being looked into uh, regarding Mayorkas' job performance. There's others as well. And what I've always said is, as majority leader, you know, we want the committees to go do their work. We, as a Republican conference, wanted to get back to regular order where under Speaker Pelosi, bills were written in the Speaker's office, committees weren't even writing their own bills, and they'd be dumped on the floor and they'd say, you know, you got to pass a bill to find out what's in it. We've gotten beyond that. We have a 72-hour rule to read a bill. But more than that, before a bill even comes to the floor, the committees are doing the work. Right now, you've got a number of committees that are getting the facts out, and ultimately with any investigation and accountability that would go with it, and you know, the ultimate accountability would be impeachment for anybody, but you start it with getting out the facts, and that's what the committees are doing right now, as they should be. Yeah. All in the back, yes. Wait, and we'll go to, we'll do a non-Trump question right after this one. How about that? Huh? Well, look, we just had a, a conference meeting where we talked about some of this, but ultimately we've been having meetings with both Freedom Caucus members, non-Freedom Caucus members. Our whole conference has been, especially this all revolves around spending. I mean, it's, you know, the fiscal year 22 levels, which we went back to in our original debt ceiling bill, the Limit Save, Save Grow Act, had a lot of important reforms in it. And then, you know, there were some members that only wanted that, uh, but ultimately that number uh, that we set in that bill that went out said we would go back to the fiscal year 22 levels. We still have an appropriations process that's just getting started. And, and I'm very encouraged by what Kay Granger and her committee are doing because they're committed to getting all of the bills out. We've got these new numbers now that they're going to start writing to, but those are caps. Doesn't mean you can't go below that. In fact, you're seeing rescissions, other things, but also limitations, you know, amendments to limit or defund certain things are also going to be coming forward in the appropriations process, both in committee and on the floor. You're going to see a very robust process over spending. All of these fights are about something we all agree on. There might be disagreements over where exactly we want to go, but all of us want to get control over spending in Washington because it's the reason you have record high inflation. It's the reason you're seeing interest rates go through the roof because Washington continued over two years of Joe Biden's administration to spend trillions of dollars of money we don't have. We're resetting that ship. Yes, ma'am. same thing last week and I've warned you uh, for the last five months we're not going to always be successful we reached a point where the uh, the members literally want to have a discussion about how we proceed from here uh, and keep in mind we've also been here now I think it's seven weeks straight uh, you know that tends to bring people together <laughs> over time uh, so I, I think uh, it's it's all about communication it's all about listening and, and as you know as you talk to me I don't give a darn how you identify yourself uh, within the conference. It doesn't matter. Each person is an individual entity that works for 600 to 750,000 people at home. No one here voted for them. 
so we need to listen to them. We need to hear them. And as best we can, we just got to make sure that everybody gets back out on the field, runs the next play, and is successful. And we'll keep Our conference it. chair is something on that, too. And the media sounds so disappointed as Republicans work through and continue to put wins up uh, for the American people. This goes back to the start of this Congress. We have been consistently underestimated. We're underestimated every single week. This is one of the slimmest majorities in modern history, but yet we put forward and passed a historic border security bill, the largest deficit reduction in the history of Congress. We passed an energy independence bill, a parents' bill of rights, and this year we're going to pass important legislation from the RAINS Act to standing up for constitutional rights of law-abiding citizens, especially our veterans. So the media every week, you guys underestimate us, but we will be laser focused on delivering results for the American people. Yeah. Well, we've been working, Andrew Clyde and I, specifically for over two months on this bill. If you go back to when the bill was going through Judiciary Committee, it actually had to get delayed a few weeks because there were vote issues. This bill has always had uh, a, a less than 218 commitments. And, you know, the whip knows this. As you bring a bill to the floor, you want to have a high level of confidence that it's going to pass. There's a lot of bills you come to the floor with where you don't have a hard, and I'm just speaking from when I was whip, I'm surely not going to speak for Tom. There were times where you have a high profile bill where you don't quite have 218, but you see where the trend's going. And, and it takes months in some cases to bring a bill like that to the floor because they're members that aren't there and you're working them to get there. And we've been moving people every week on this bill, but it's been incremental. And in fact, even over the weekend, I gave Andrew Clyde some more names and he helped move some of those people. But he's heard some of the opposition, let's just say, or the hesitation that members have had and the reasons why they just weren't quite there and we're working to get them there. Uh, ultimately, we're, you know, we're going to pass this bill, but it has not been easy because there's been a lot of members that have had questions about it that we've been working through their questions. Any big bill has had that. Uh, this bill's taken a few months. We've had other bills that have taken months to get to the floor. What I've told Andrew Clyde from the beginning, uh, and, and I've repeated this over and over to him for months now, my objective is to pass his bill, not just to bring his bill to the floor, but to pass his bill. Big, big difference between the two because this is an important issue. The Second Amendment rights of millions of Americans are at stake. Uh, so you don't just bring the bill to the floor because somebody wants it up three weeks ago if it's going to fail when you can hold off and keep working to grow that coalition. We have been growing that coalition. The WHIP has done a great job helping us grow that coalition, identifying the members we needed to keep working on, and we've been working on them. And a lot of, a lot of folks that care about the Second Amendment outside of this city really care about this too. You know, you know a lot of the big names, the NRA, Gun Owners of America, the National Shooting Sports Foundation are all supportive. There are a lot of military veteran groups that are strongly supporting this too because disabled veterans especially are at risk if we don't overturn this. And so we're doing this for millions of Americans, including a lot of disabled veterans who otherwise won't be able to exercise their constitutional right. That's why it's so important that we don't just bring the bill, but that we pass the bill. And that's what we'll be doing tonight. Thank you. For statutory changes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Ossoff. Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, every day when I'm home in Texas, I hear from Texans who are deeply dismayed about the growing politicization and weaponization of the Department of Justice and the FBI. If you are not, every one of you should be deeply concerned about the damage being done to the integrity of the institutions in which you operate. My office hears regularly from FBI agents and from assistant U.S. attorneys who are likewise concerned about the politicization and weaponization of the Department of Justice and the FBI, and this is profoundly damaging to the rule of law in our nation. Last month, a whistleblower brought to light the existence in the FBI of a report, an FD-1023, in which the informant alleges that President Biden and his family members engaged in a $5 million bribery scheme during his time as vice president. Deputy Director Abadi, is it true that the FBI has a report making those allegations? Uh, I'm not going to comment on that, Senator. And why is that? 
I'm just not going to comment on uh, information we received, investigations. Or Do you owe an matters. obligation to the American people to be candid about evidence of corruption by the President of the United States? This is uh, an area that I'm not going to get into with you, Senator. Well, I understand you don't want to, and that's why people are mad at the FBI, because you're stonewalling and covering up serious allegations of evidence of corruption from the president. Yesterday, Senator Chuck Grassley stood on the Senate floor and alleged that there are 17 recordings of this informant from Burisma, Ukrainian natural gas company, 15 of them are recordings, voice recordings of him talking to Hunter Biden. Two of them are voice recordings of him talking to Joe Biden, Deputy Director Abate. Does the FBI have 17 voice recordings laying out evidence of a bribery scheme? Senator, I'd add all, I would add also that uh, we've worked with the House Oversight Committee. Yeah, this is the Senate. The We're the other side of the Capitol. This is the Senate. Do you have those 17 recordings? I'm not going to comment on any investigative matters, Senator. See, that's the problem. The FBI, and I've had this conversation with Chris Ray too, this is why you are damaging the institution. The American people have a right to know whether there is serious, credible evidence that the President of the United States took a $5 million bribe. And by the way, if it's false, Chairman Durbin just rolled his eyes. If Chairman Durbin were interested in the rule of law, we would have a hearing on these allegations. But of course, the Democrats don't want a hearing on the, these allegations. And to be clear, if the allegations are false, you know who could disprove them? Joe Biden. He could call for this to be released publicly. But the FBI is stonewalling. Would two, you agree? Two things, Senator. No sure. one's stonewalling. The 1023 you just said you refused was provided to answer the question. in response to a subpoena. Okay, the then House why'd you refuse to answer my the, question? The pertinent information is there, and I reject your assertion that the why FBI is Why did you refuse to answer my question? I just answered your question. Okay, so yes, you have a 1023. Do you have the 17 recordings, yes or no? I'm not going to get further into that. So Senator. you're stonewalling. You can't say I'm not refusing to answer your question, but I won't answer your question. I'm going to answer within the parameters that we operate in. Here. That's the problem. The FBI has right now an unlimited hubris that you believe you are unaccountable. You don't believe you're accountable to the United States Congress, and you don't believe you're accountable to the American people. And you are doing damage. The FBI is a great institution. When I go home to Texas, people ask me, should we abolish the FBI? Now, I tell them no, because you have heroes and patriots working for you that are catching child predators, that are catching terrorists. But you're sitting there happily erecting a wall to protect Joe Biden. Will you provide to this committee, not the House, the Senate Judiciary Committee, will you provide the FD 1023 and will you provide the 17 recordings so we can assess what is the evidence, the specific credible evidence that Joe Biden personally took a $5 million bribe from a foreign national? Senator, we will work with this committee, you and other members, to provide uh, the information within the parameters of the process. Will you provide the FD 1023, yes or no? I will take that back and we will work with our So you're not to, answering that. Will you provide the 17 recordings? We will take that back and we'll work with you. So you're staff. not answering that either. Did you investigate in any way, shape, or form these allegations? Senator, once again, I'm not going to comment. So on you're not going to say whether you did your job? We do our job to the very best of our ability. Well, not here. You're not answering a single question to the American people. And you may think this is esoteric. I promise you, millions of Americans are concerned. You know who isn't concerned? Not a single Senate Democrat. We're going to go through this whole hearing. Not one Democrat will ask a question about this. You know who else isn't concerned? The corporate media who is joining with the Democrats in covering up this evidence. If Joe Biden is innocent... The evidence should be made public and demonstrate that he's innocent. But if he is not, is it true this informant who alleged that he personally took a bribe was an informant the FBI had relied upon previously in other investigations? Yes or no? Senator, in each and every uh, investigation that we have, all the work that we do, I, I asked the you expectation yes or no is that every I logical asked, avenue, avenue investigation be pursued to its I asked you a yes or fullest. no question. Are you going to answer it? Yeah, I'm, I'm answering your question. Was the informant one you had relied on previously in other investigations, yes or no? 
Senator, we run down every piece of information. Every you're not lead, answering it then. You're refusing to answer it. So you're refusing to answer the question. To the fullest extent possible. You're refusing to answer the question. Senator, is that time is in all instances. Senator, your time it's is disgraceful. Period. It's disgraceful, Deputy De Director Abate. Disgraceful. Senator, your time has expired. Senator Tills. Uh, Chairman, I think uh, Senator Blackburn goes before me, or Senator Welch. I appreciate the opportunity, but. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Tillis. It's Senator Welch is next. Was he in there? Who knows, right? Watch yourself. Watch yourself, watch yourself. We lost Trump! 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 Motherfucker, get the fuck yeah. out of here! Get My out fucking out of here. grandfather died for get that fight! Get, 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 right. get, right. get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! You strike me and I'll knock the fucking rear naked here! Fucking you strike me! Back up! You strike me! Back up! Sorry, you strike me! I got something in my pocket! My grandfather died for that fight! Hey, I was in the military! I was in the military! Come on, I was man. in the military. You, you best take your ass back! I got something out of here! Get out of here! I got something right here! I got something. Go ahead. Go ahead. My body Go ahead. You. Go ahead. My body you. Go ahead. Go to the side. Go to the side. Go to the side. That's fine. All right. All right. You think I? You think I? Follow him. Go to the side. Donald Trump! Donald Trump! President Trump! President Trump! President! After three, talk to you in a little bit. President Trump! 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 Lock him up! 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah
Let's go. He's gonna be right here. Don't worry. You're fine. Let's go. 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 Let's go.